Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We are recording this briefing on Sunday, August 17th, 2025. And we, of course, are tracking Hurricane Aaron, now passing north of the Virgin Islands, expected to take a northerly turn later on in the week. Currently winds at 125 miles per hour, moving west-northwest at 13 miles per hour, bringing a lot of heavy rain to Puerto Rico, flash flooding. And of course, when you have flash flooding in mountainous terrain, you also have the threat of landslides and mudslides. Aaron will continue to track off to the northwest and eventually took a turn to the north. And I know we'll talk about the track in more detail. Right now, the good news is it looks like those high impactful winds will stay away from any populated areas, but it could still have impacts for the Bahamas, for uh, potentially the eastern coast of the United States in the form of high surf and rip currents, and then uh, Bermuda as well. Then we have right behind Aaron now, fresh on the board disturbance number two with a 30 percent chance of development over the next seven days and then we have disturbance one with only a 10 percent chance of development off the carolinas if you look at the infrared satellite for aaron seems to be going through a eyewall replacement cycle maybe even on the uh, tail end of, of coming out of it as we saw hurricane aaron Max out at 165 mile an hour winds is category five, now down to 125 as hurricanes often do. They do weaken when they go through these eyewall replacement cycles, but uh, still looking very impressive on the infrared satellite. And if we look at disturbance two, you can see that wave coming off the African coast again, following a very similar path to Aaron, but a long way to go for disturbance number two. And then on the next infrared satellite we have a little closer view of Aaron you can see it there maybe an eye starting to take a little bit better shape on some of those last few um th those last few slides we take a look there it is and of course you can see that very powerful convection off to the nor northeast of the eye wall right now as Aaron moves off to the west northwest Jeff interesting storm First hurricane of the Atlantic season, first Category 5. Aaron's not messing around. Powerful hurricane. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting look today or this afternoon. Um, you can you can see here it has really good outflow on the southern side of it. You can see these, these high-level cirrus spiraling out. I wouldn't say the same thing here to the north, and so you don't see the wispy cirrus kind of pouring out to the north. And so I think there's some weak uh, upper level winds starting to impinge here on this. I don't think that's the issue that we're seeing with air in the air. The, the issue, like you mentioned, is going through an eye wall replacement cycle. And so what happens, that little tiny six mile wide eye it had yesterday when it was at 165 miles an hour collapses and then a, a larger maximum of winds forms. And then that, that kind of contracts in. And so you can kind of see this happening uh, a much larger eye is taking shape. And so when you go through these eye, what we call these eye wall replacement cycles, uh, what it really does is it, it, it expands the wind field. And so the overall uh, range of the hurricane and tropical storm force winds expands outward from the center. And so this is how storms not necessarily grow in intensity, but they grow in size. And then uh, uh, as this comes on up here to the north and west, uh, you'll see that eye wall contract, and it'll probably strengthen again. I think the Hurricane Center is bringing it up to 140, 145 as it kind of scrapes here east of the Bahamas. We do have tropical storm warnings here for the southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos, just in case they get some tropical storm force winds. You can see the wind field here in, in orange. Um, probably going to miss, you know, these islands to the east, but just in case the wind field expands a little bit. Uh, the biggest threat here, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, is is going to be the surf along the uh, U.S. East Coast, the Bahamas, the Caribbean islands, and Bermuda. Um, see, fairly fairly straightforward here on the track. You know, if if you needed a major hurricane to recurve somewhere in the Atlantic Basin, uh, you couldn't really ask for a better solution here. Yeah. Passing safely western Bermuda safely east of the U.S. East Coast, east of the Bahamas. I mean, this is a storm that effectively has not significantly impacted any land masses. Um, yeah, we had the heavy rains and gusty winds down here in the in the islands um, last night and this morning. But for the most part, given how significant the storm is, it's 
pretty much going to miss everybody here. So uh, fairly, fairly uh, good track guidance here. One thing I will say is there is a lot of marine interest up in this area. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's a fish storm. But there is actually quite a bit of vessel traffic through this area of the Atlantic. And so all that vessel traffic is going to have to be rerouted. Um, around this hurricane and around the seas, um, really big seas. Some of the models are creeping out 60 to 80 feet here in the western Atlantic as this curves off to the north and the east. Again, we're probably at peak intensity here in the next 12 to 24 hours as this eyewall cycle um, completes. And then a slow kind of reduction in the intensity as we go through time as it pulls further to the north. The, in, the wind shear is going to increase some. We'll also eventually get into cooler waters as it gets further north up around uh, for days four and five. So uh, slow weakening, but this is this is going to be a, a fairly significant hurricane all through this period. And I wanted to put this up because this is this is one of those things that people just totally sleep on, Mm -hmm. uh, really don't pay attention to, and that's the the rip current risk. And so. You know, you're going to put this big monster hurricane right up through this region, again, with some really massive waves. And those waves are going to reach uh, the U.S. East Coast in some form and fashion. So we're going to have really, really high rip current risk this entire week, you know, along the entire U.S. East Coast. So initially down here in Florida and then spreading up the Carolinas and into the Northeast United States. And we've had we've seen this before with hurricanes that pass two or three hundred miles off the U.S. East Coast. Uh, we can end up with um, some fatalities here on these beaches uh, where people get uh, in, involved in the water and don't really understand or, or realize the significance of the rip current. And so pay attention to that if you're going to the beach on the U.S. East Coast, Bermuda, the islands down here, that those rip currents are going to be really big with those big waves. The other thing to look at is, you can see here's our Hurricane Aaron exiting off to the north and the east. And so I've been kind of showing this this year. We have the European ensembles along with the uh, Google AI um, ensembles here. And, and this is that wave that's currently off the coast of Africa. And it does not really look like it's going to attempt to develop until we probably get to about 50 Are 55 west. You know, we saw Aaron struggle a lot until it really got to about 60 west. I think we're going to have the same thing with this wave. It's, it's going to come, you know, far west before it starts to develop. And you can see here, there's, there's a pretty good clustering here east of the northern Leeward Islands as we get into this is Thursday, uh, midday Thursday of this week. And that's probably when we might start to see things get a little bit more favorable for development. I think that's going to potentially have some issues here with the track. And so the longer it takes us to develop, the further south and the west it's going to make it. And so if, if it doesn't develop until it gets, you know, over here near the Caribbean or even potentially the Eastern Caribbean, uh, that could be a different game here in the longer term as to where this may go because high pressure is going to be building in behind Aaron here in the Western Atlantic. And so how that high builds in, how long this next system takes to develop are going to be some really important pieces uh, as we get into late this week and next weekend. Um, and, and there's definitely some, some, some um, interest here, especially for the islands, that they, that they could see something out of this next one uh, not passing as far to the north. And if we look at the European uh, 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 probabilities here of a tropical, at least a tropical depression, you can see they're significantly... Uh, elevator here in the in the 60 to even 80 percent range by later this week by Saturday of a tropical depression forming. So this next wave coming off the coast of Africa is one we're going to have to watch. A, it looks like it's going to develop. B, the longer it takes to develop, the more concern there is for areas a little bit further to the west potentially being impacted. And then C, we'll just have to see, does, does this one come far enough west that potentially gets to the Gulf of Mexico? Is it a threat to the southeast United States and Florida? We'll just have to see. I know there's been some scary GFS runs out there that that show the, you know, the de destruction of the U.S. Gulf Coast again. Yeah. <laughs> um, just be careful, just like with Aaron, we caution everybody on the deterministic uh, model runs. Um, but this one we're going to have to keep, a, I would think, a closer eye on than we ever really had to with Aaron. So something to keep an eye on as we go through the next seven days. Yeah, and of course, you can keep it right here to stay with a trusted source with Weather Insights. We have our regular weekly updates on Sundays, our tropical briefings, and then we have our daily forecast now. 
on all the social media platforms. And then you can also read Jeff's blog on our Weather Insights webpage. Jeff, good stuff. Thank you very much. Until next time, we'll see you then.